Let's take a look at how we can load external zips and packs, such as for mods and patches. Alright, so you saw in the opening there, I have two zips there. And I could make them PCKs, but there's no need. Zips are easier for any common person to do, and the method remains the same regardless. Now, if you noticed in the uh, path there at the top of that bar, I have this in a specific folder. And for this example, I just called it mod test. But of course, you can put this mods folder anywhere on your computer, so long as your game or application is pointing towards it. So, if you're wondering what I have here for our testing, I just have a control node as the root, and I have a texture rect as the child, and on top of my control, I just have this empty script. All we have is a ready function that says pass. Alright, so, to let you know what the, this mod is, or these mods are going to do, is we create... Uh, or we load this in, and it's going to change my icon PNG there to either a green version or a red version, with blue, of course, being the default. So let's go ahead and let's create a function that we can use to set our texture as the description inside of the uh, documentation. But when it comes to loading these things in, it says that the, well, at least the wording that they use give me the impression that. If I apply my icon.png to my texture rect, it should automatically load in the new one. But I've used a an example scene here to just switch over to it. It doesn't load automatically. I've delayed adding a new a new one into the scene. It does not load automatically. So I'm gonna show you how how to not only create this function here, but it's also gonna be Something that you could stick on, uh, maybe a global script and just add anywhere. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Let's move that slightly out of the way there so I can type. So I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it load texture. And it's going to take in two arguments, the object and the pathing. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a variable called image and load that in Just one moment here and move things around. All right. So let's go ahead and load our texture. In. So we're going to create a new variable called IMG, create a new image from this. And for reference, this uh, function here is also how you would load an image in if you wanted the user to select an image on the computer and then use that to replace an image inside of your game. This is how you would go about doing something like that as well, for this function at least. All right, so we're going to do image.load. And what we're going to load is the path that gets passed in. We're going to create a new texture. So var.texture equals image, whoops, image texture dot new. All right, now we're going to call it texture dot create from image and we're going to pass in our image and we're simply going to get obj which is our object here dot texture equals texture all right so now that we have our uh, texture loading in here and we can easily test this by uh, calling the function load texture put in our texture right there and you can put in the path to any variable on your computer now, I'll remind you that if I run this, we don't have any image here at all. And if I come in here and we call load texture, I'll call in my texture rect, and I'll just pass in the path to my icon.png here. And we load it now, and we'll see, there it is. All right, so we can see our loading image is working, or loading up our texture, rather. So what we need now is we need to load our mod pack. So I'm going to say load mod or load mods. 
And all we're going to do is we're going to call project settings dot load resource pack. And we're going to pass in our pack as a string. So I'm just going to click over to the zips that you saw in the beginning there. And I'm just going to right click one of them and hit copy its path. Paste it in. Now you notice the direction that our slashes are going in here. Those are unacceptable in Godot. So you can either delete it and use the ones that we have leaning forward. Or you can simply just add a second one to all of these. And that'll fix this issue. Either way works. I'm just going to go with the doubles here. And you see now that we load this up. As long as we load our mods first. Before we load our texture. See that it's going to pop up and we're going to have the green version. And if we change this to red, we will have our red version. Alright, so now all you got to do is uh, go through your list. Or not go through your list, sorry. Go through a uh, search for your mods. So go through a directory. Open up wherever you want your mod folder to be. Check if you have any mods in there. And if so, add them into probably an array. And from there, um, just call, run a for loop, I suppose. Load all the packs in. Now, this obviously is very specific with how it's hard coded here. So, let us take a look at more of a manager perspective. All right. So, to give you an idea, um, this is how a mod loader for the game might look. So we have the location of our mod folder up here, as well as an array to hold our list of mods. Now, instead of jumping into load mods, we're actually going to call a new function called get mod that you would create and pass in the mod folder. This is simply just going to create a new directory, open it up, get a list of all the files in there. And we're going to make sure as long as we have files, so as long as it's not an empty file name, if it's a... The uh, file is a directory, uh, so if someone just creates an empty folder in there for whatever reason, uh, we're just going to pass and skip over it. Now, else means we found a file of some sort. We're going to take that file and we're going to append it into our mods array. And we're going to add the mod folder plus the file name. Now, if you want to be extra safe here, uh, we can also add on, add in if file name dot get extension oh no nope, my mistake I did not type it incorrect it's just telling me an error even though we just haven't gotten to that portion yet. Alright so if you want to put an extra bit of security in there so uh, you can check if the extension it is zip or xt equals PCK. So if you want to take the extra step, you can just do it that way. And yeah, we'll just shorten that down. So by creating a new variable. Then. All right. So if you want to add the extra security in there, um, just to make sure that you are only loading a zip and PCK file, since that's all you're going to be able to load. Um, this is what we do. Simple. But you get the idea, we load all of our mods in our mod directory into a mods list. And then our load mods just gets changed a little bit. So we say if mods, which is going to say if there's items inside of our mods. So if we have some mods to load, some mod packs, then we're going to go through all of our mods and load them one by one. Now, if I run this, you see this is not only going to work, but we're going to load up the red. And that's because red. It's going to overwrite green, right? Because if it's going in alphabetical order down the list, uh, like a file directory normally does, we have, we're going to load green and overwrite the normal icon PNG, the blue one, and then we're going to load the red and overwrite the green. Now, this is where you can create a mod manager to kind of handle this kind of stuff for you. And basically, all you're going to do there is just move things around in your array. And the beginning of your array is obviously going to load first, and the end is going to load last. 
So the lower down the list, uh, the lower down it is in the list, the higher priority it's going to take. If that makes sense. All right. So there we go. There's the, uh, hopefully a quick little video. I'll uh, to show you guys how you can set up your own little mod section for your game or project. Um, so this will allow people to mod uh, or create mods for your game. In this example here, we're using textures so people can load their own images in. But you can also take this into a project if you wanted to allow users to, I don't know, maybe if you have custom mouse cursor or something. You can allow a user to insert their own image. Anyway, that's it. That'll do it for this video. Take care. Have yourselves a good one. If you have any questions or something that you want to see, leave it down below. And I'll do my best to get that in, hopefully, the next video. You know, just get it going like that. Uh, before I ramble on, take care. <laughs>